takes a community to make a synagogue. And we learn that from today's parasha. We learn about the construction of the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the wilderness. We know that Moshe received the pattern on Mount Sinai, but it took the whole community to get things done. That's an important lesson. We learned about uh, Bezalel and Aholiav, who were spiritually gifted, and even more than that. We read, see, Adonai has singled out Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda. He has filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge concerning every kind of artisanry. He is, uh, 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 he is a master of design in gold, silver, bronze, cutting precious stones to be set, wood carving, and every other craft. Adonai has also given him a holy of the son of Achisamach of the tribe of Don, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with the skill needed for every kind of work, whether done by an artisan, a designer, an embroiderer, using blue, uh, uh, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, or of a weaver. They have the skill for every kind of work and design. Betzalel and Aholiav, and we each have what is called a giftedness set. The giftedness set is one's combination of natural abilities, acquired skills, and spiritual gifts. We tend to look at a person like Betzalel, especially Betzalel, and we think, oh my, I'm a nobody. I'm, I've got nothing. This guy has it all in spades, and I don't have anything. Not true. Each of us has a giftedness set. Every one of you has a combination of natural abilities, acquired skills, and spiritual gifts. Now, how did that happen? Just one moment, please. Each of us has a giftedness set. Uh, it's a combination of our natural abilities, our acquired skills, and our spiritual gifts. Betzalel and Aholiav, and we each have natural abilities. What are they? Natural abilities are capacities, skills, talents, or aptitudes, which are innate in a person and allow him or her to accomplish things. They are part of one's genetic payload. Each one of you has a genetic payload. There is something you're good at. Maybe your mother, maybe your mother and your father were uh, linguistically gifted. They, they, they just had the gift of gab. Chances are you do too. My children, God bless them, all of them are extremely articulate people. I admire them greatly. I think they get that from their parents, but we got it from our parents. So it's part of your genetic payload. You, each of you, from the least of us to the greatest of us, has capa have capacities, skills, talents, or aptitudes, which are innate to us, and we're just born with it. Acquired skills, what are they? Acquired skills are formally or informally learned capacities, skills, talents, or aptitudes that enable us to get things done. It may be something you went to school for. I went to Manhattan School of Music. I went to Fuller Theological Seminary School of Intercultural Studies. I got a fistful of degrees, but that's not the only way you learn. You learn from your friends. You learn from what you read. You learn from YouTube. Whatever it is that you learn, uh, in addition to how you're naturally gifted, are acquired skills. Each of us has them, from the least of us to the greatest of us. And then there are spiritual gifts. What is a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift is a God-given capacity imparted for the purpose of releasing a Holy Spirit-empowered effect that benefits God's community. Spiritual gifts are not basically for our entertainment, therefore the well-being of the community. And they're 
they're spirit empowered. They're, they're given by God, but doesn't mean, and sometimes you can't identify what they are. Uh, there was a man named uh, Tom White who, who wrote a book, wrote a couple of books on spiritual warfare. And he's a, a, involved in a prayer movement in the Northeast, Northwest, interesting man. He's got a Jewish mother-in-law. He says his mother-in-law, who's not a believer, has tremendous discernment. She can spot somebody's character instantly. So he says, it's kind of like she has a gift of discernment, but not exactly. A gift of discernment would be something that kind of piggybacks on your natural uh, instinct. Many gifts, spiritual gifts, will piggyback on something else. With your permission, I'm going to use myself as a well, I won't use myself. Let me use Art Cats. Some of you don't know Art Cats. I encourage you to go on YouTube and look him up and look at a couple of his sermons. Art Cats has two natural gifts. First of all, he's ruggedly handsome. In uh, the very early 1970s, I was involved in a fellowship in New York where he became the preacher for a while. The women who came to the meeting melted when they saw this guy. He was He's just a very naturally gifted. Uh, he's got a rugged, manly handsomeness that has just been with him all his life. But he is also the most articulate person I have ever known. His powers of articulation are stunning. Now, the Holy Spirit piggybacks on that and gave him a kind of a prophetic ability, an ability to really Get, speak to the hearts of God's people, that was extraordinary. But sometimes, not always, sometimes spiritual gifts will, pardon the expression, piggyback, work in synergy with your natural abilities and your acquired skills. So there's three guidelines to bear in mind. As I said just now, that spiritual gifts often function as enhancements of our natural abilities or acquired skills. Secondly, the three aspects of our giftedness set work together synergistically, mutually empowering each other. A natural, you can't tell where your natural abilities, your acquired skills and the spiritual gifts, where they kick in. They work, it doesn't work that way. They work in synergy with each other. Thirdly, in each person, some aspect of the giftedness set that should be set will predominate. In other words, in the case of Art Katz, his natural giftedness uh, is what has always, always impressed me. His powers of articulation, first class mind, but oh my, did he have a gift of gab. Extraordinary. In each person, some aspect of the giftedness set will predominate. And this dominant aspect is called one's focal element. That's just a little bit of news for you. And I'm going to tell you why I'm giving it to you. I suggest that you each get a piece of paper and work on these three questions this week. Number one, what are your innate abilities or character traits? Things about your character and performance that come naturally to you. Maybe you're, you've just always been compassionate. It may come because of your family. Maybe you have, maybe you're the kind of person that was always taking things apart and putting them back together again. Maybe you're just a mathematical whiz and you can't help it. Uh, it's just the way you are. Like a certain person I know married to a guy named Jeff. Uh, what are your innate abilities? Number two, what are your acquired skills? the things you've learned to do from others, not just in school, but through mentorship, through apprenticeship, through observation, through reading about it, seeing, seeing YouTubes about it, whatever. What are your acquired skills? Thirdly, what are your spiritual gifts? Things you do which build up and help others spiritually. And, uh, and you may want to work uh, these out with a friend, by the way, uh, the, the, a friend who knows you well will say, well, you know, you, you probably don't realize about this, this about yourself, 
but you have a tremendous gift for blank, or you have a tremendous ability to do blank. So work those work those questions out, natural abilities, acquired skills, spiritual gifts. This week's Torah reading suggests that we might add a fourth aspect to the gift in this set. In addition to natural abilities, acquired skills, and spiritual gifts, I would say a fourth aspect, which we see from today's Torah reading, is whatever help you can. We see this in today's Parsha. People just came helping any way they could. That's another part of your giftedness set, your ability to just help any way you can. Both men and women came, as many as had willing hearts. They brought nose rings, earrings, signet rings, belts, all kinds of gold, jewelry, everyone bringing an offering of gold to Adonai. Was this a, a natural ability? No. Was it acquired skill? No. Was it a spiritual gift? No. It was just people doing whatever they could, offering whatever help you can. This is really the way God builds his, uh, his community. So I'm not going to read all this. What does it mean for us? Take time to identify your giftedness set, as I mentioned earlier, natural abilities, acquired skills, spiritual gifts. Number two, look for opportunities to improve your congregation through making your giftedness set available. Make your natural abilities available. Make your acquired skills available. Make your spiritual gifts available. Thirdly, remember that everyone has contributions to make to community construction, including offering whatever help you can to advance the cause. You don't have to know if it's a spiritual gift or whatever, just do what you can. That's the way the tabernacle was built. Natural abilities, acquired skills, spiritual gifts, like, like uh, uh, Aholiav and like Betzalel. In conclusion, from the book of Judges, a favorite verse on how God gets things done. This is from Judges chapter five, verse two, that the leaders took the lead in Israel and that the people offered themselves willingly, bless the Lord. A congregation only succeeds to the extent that both halves of this are true. Leaders need to lead, but the people need to offer themselves willingly if the people had not offered themselves and their goods and whatever help they could willingly, the tabernacle would not have been built. So that's a lesson for you. It's a lesson for me. It's a lesson for us. It's a lesson for now and a lesson for always. Amen. I hope it helps you.